Hello everyone, this is Dylan May, and I've just intended the unlikely fandom premiere at Museum of Moving Image on November 27th. As you can see here, I traveled to New York with my brothers on November 24th all the way to the 28th. And on the 27th, which is the last night of spending time in New York, I attended the premiere and I was able to meet a lot of fans, even get to meet the director, Brendan Carty, and two special guests, Rick Siegel Cow and the surprising special guest of all, Britt Alcroft, the creator of Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, the television series based on the railway series by the Rev. W. Audrey. I had so much fun attending the premiere, and I even gave out some gifts to each fan, which includes graphic design artworks that I've made, even the two I've made for Britt Alcroft and Rick Siegelkow, and even for Brendan Cardi as well. And now, I am very pleased to announce that I created my unlikely fandom blog, where I'll be sharing my videos and photos from the premiere, and I hope you all enjoy. And now at the Museum of Moving Image, where an unlikely fandom is premiering. Heading to meet and Brendan Carty and special guests tonight.
with all of you tonight as we celebrate this huge achievement. Now let's see where everyone's from. Who here is from New York? Woo! Okay, a lot of people. Who here is from the U.S. outside of New York? Yeah. A lot of people traveling in. Who here is from Canada? <laughs> My mom, everyone. Who <laughs> is from the United Kingdom? Well, we'll check next day. Oh, <laughs> I'm living in Queens, but I'm technically British. <laughs> Anyone from Australia? All well, this right in front of us is the impact of Thomas the Tank Engine, because what other reason would people from all over the world be gathered here in a room together? It's amazing. Now, a few housekeeping things. Please make sure your phones are on silent. Uh, please refrain from talking during the movie. We have a lot of people here uh, who have come far and wide, and we want to make sure that we're respectful to everyone. And please do not take any pictures, videos, or any recordings of the film while it's on the screen. Feel free to take my picture. I like that picture taken. Here, take pictures. Just not of the movie, please. I'm so happy I could laugh. I also want to thank Doug Blaine and all our friends from Bachman Trains for these fantastic pins that they donated to us. <laughs> Bachman Trains have been huge supporters of us in this film, and we're so glad that you could be here tonight. Uh, and if anyone didn't get a pin, we will have them available outside after the movie is done. <laughs> Now, who is ready to discover an unlikely fandom? My best advice is buckle up. Because we seriously are not ready for what's about to happen. I know you're not. <laughs> I promise you that this is going to be a night that we will remember for a very, very long time. Now, are you ready, New York? Yeah! Let's give the warmest of welcomes to the director of an unlikely fandom. It's Brandon Cardi. Yeah! Cardi, 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 This is crazy. <laughs> That's okay. no, I'm this is very crazy. If, if you had told me four years ago I'd be presenting this silly little train documentary in front of a sold out audience in New York, I'd have said you were insane. But here we are. We did it. We finished it after four years, despite numerous, and I, God, I mean numerous challenges along the way. Wow. <laughs> uh, we did the impossible, we made the world's most expensive Thomas fan project. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the director, producer, editor of Craft Services on this film. Uh, I came up with this idea in 2019. I was with my professor, Kevin Wells, uh, over at UNCG. And he, I pitched him this crazy idea, you know, what if I made this documentary about the Thomas family for college credits, and his mouth dropped. I, I don't think he knew what that was. Um, so that was then. It's now November 27th, 2023. I didn't think it would take four years to, uh, to make this, nor did I think I'd have to give up so much and sacrifice and go through so many things to, to, to get it done. It was, it was tough. It was brutal. And they even put me in the emergency clinic just, uh, just a few weeks ago. Oh. Oh. Okay, I'm on Xanax, it's fine. <laughs> it, it all worked out, and I, I, I think it was worth it. 
from the beaches of Ventura, California, to the Tally Quinn. Set it right. Set it right. works in Wales. We interviewed a bunch of really cool people who would not have met if it weren't for Thomas the Tank Engine. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a parent in the audience tonight or just an observer, I hope you'll see just how special Thomas is to really everyone in, in this audience. It's, it's, it's insane. Now, before we show the movie, I need to thank a few people who got us here. So you, you need about 15 minutes of your time. <laughs> uh, I'd like to give a very special shout out to a very special woman in the audience tonight. And that person is my mother, Dawn. Let me live at home rent free. <laughs> well, I paid for this thing, which ended up costing thirty thousand um, dollars. There was no way I could finance this film and, and pay rent and you know do whatever, have a life. But <laughs> the most important part is, no matter how old I got, she didn't once every time I could grow up out of Thomas. She, she kept buying me cakes, buying me toys. Um, because I'd like to think, you know, she's she's a Thomas fan too. I think you like that. And she agrees with me. You're all indeed really useful fans. And my mother is always right. So are you. You are really useful. Well, thank you, Jean, my honorary dad, for putting up with all this. Um, I'd also like to thank my sister, Brittany, who was in the audience tonight, and she also scanned your tickets. So thank her. The very first person to see a cut of this film when it was like 45 minutes and it was some amateur college projects, whatever. Um, so thank you, Brittany. Where are you? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, thank you for letting me, you know, rant about this on our, on our workouts and you know everything. Just kind of, and thank you for watching it too. I know you had to watch it five times, maybe. Um, and thank you, John, her husband, for also putting up with this as well. I'm sure it's a lot to deal with. <laughs> I'd also like to give a shout out to my producers, Josh, Ahmed, Scalco, and Paul. These guys joined just before. <laughs> These guys joined just before we made the Kickstarter, which ended up raising $15,000 in a month, which is insane. <laughs> At, at that point, I was like, oh god, I'm in over my head. Um, because it was just me driving, shooting, coordinating, lighting, doing everything. And it, 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 was, it was a lot. It's, it's a lot to do. And I asked these three guys to come on board, or these four guys to come on board. And they helped me stick the landing, which, which was really important. The, for the other filmmakers in the audience, you have a lot of people that will tell you, oh, I'll help you out on this project. And you know, they ghost you, which is fun. Mm -hmm. not, uh, not these guys. They... They are my brothers. They have my back. They had my back every step of the way, and, and still do. And I, this, I really could not have done it without them because doing this by yourself is, is insane. And I, I would never want to do it by myself again. So thank you, Josh, Ahmed, Scalco, John. I love you. Aww. Thank you, Ali. Thank you for coming out for putting up with this too. The last two months have been hellish, just figuring it out, finishing the film, getting all, all, all the playing in place, and you made it so much easier for me. You introduced me to T, which really helped me. It's <laughs> it's incredible. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here tonight. Now it's time to introduce uh, our guest of honor tonight. You know him well. Yeah. He is the man who brought Thomas to the United States and co-created Channing Time Station. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Rick Singlecombe. of Thomas the Tank Engine, and it changed my life. And, you know, I didn't know what it was. Uh, I'd never heard of Thomas, 
but I took it home to my wife and I showed it to her and she was like, this is amazing. And I took it around to preschools and I showed it to them and the, the kids loved it. Even though all the naysayers out there said, nobody's gonna like this show. They want robots, they want exploding mm -hmm. spaceships. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we didn't listen to them. A couple weeks later, I called Britt Allcroft and she came over to New York. We started working together and uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Josh. I'm known in the fandom as. Hey! Now, if, if, never in my wildest dreams would I have thought 35 years ago that I'd be standing here tonight. And what an amazing thing. But on the other hand, I don't know if I would have been that surprised because the values of Thomas characters and the stories, they're timeless. Now, I knew about the fandom. I, I read things online and I knew, but I didn't really know you guys until I went to a train show in New Jersey. And, and that's when I really began to appreciate the passion and the size of the fandom and your love for these characters and for your community. That's when I first really began to, to understand firsthand. Um, it took me back, to be very honest, to the early days of Shining Time Station when Britt and I would go out and have our meet and greets and we'd meet all the kids. Um, I guess I forgot you all grew up. <laughs> Never too old. Never too old. Some of us haven't grown up fully. <laughs> Amen. It was a very, very moving experience for me. And tonight we're coming together for what I think is going to be a very moving experience for all of us. Now I haven't seen. Right. Brett hasn't shown me the film. Yet. Everyone else I know has seen it. I thought, oh yeah, it's a great film, it's a great film. I have no doubt that it's a great film, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Um, but I've seen enough to know a couple of things. I know it's about Thomas, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but even, even more so, um, it's a film about all of you. And all the other fans around the world who couldn't be here. So tonight, I think this is a chance to celebrate Thomas and celebrate your community. Now, as one content creator to another, <laughs> I just want to say congratulations. Yeah.
enabling people to have a lot of fun in their lives and a lot of sweetness. Mm. And I think he is going to truly, I've told him this, I think he is going to be a star director one day, mm. sooner rather than later. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Brett, for making my childhood great. I can't wait to see this movie. I've seen um, bits of it, but I haven't seen it all of the piece. <laughs> I haven't really, I've heard bits of the music, but I haven't heard the whole score. Um, and is there any, uh, what, a couple of questions from you, from me? Is that all right with you? We're, we're going to do it afterwards. Oh, we're going to do it afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. watch? I think it's time to watch a movie. <laughs> Secrets, very poorly, I might add. <laughs> and hopefully, a lot of my weird cryptic Twitter posts will finally make yes, a little yes, bit of sense. Yes, please. We've got a great movie for you tonight. It's unique. It's from the heart. But most importantly, it's a love letter to our favorite little blue engine, Thomas, the tank engine. Are you excited? Yes! yes! After four very long years, let's watch it now once again together. Come on, let's do it. How did you come up with the idea to make a film about the Thomas fandom? Uh, it just sort of popped into my head because I had to get college credit. <laughs> so I was kind of scrambling for ideas and I thought this was the closest thing that I cared about. Because I always wanted to do a Thomas documentary, which we kind of did in the end. We kind of talked about the show. Yeah. So I thought this is the next best thing and I could you know, use it as like my capstone project at my college. and. The rest is history. Well, it, it's well, it's the present now, and we all love it, don't we? Yes. yes. Pretty amazing. Now, Amen. Hello. Hello. How you doing? Good. Yeah. The star switcher. No, you. <laughs> How did you become part of this documentary? Okay, so me and Cardi, we go back almost 10, 15 years at this point. And in school, he would show me everything that he's doing because he's gonna show me anything he's making in school, why wouldn't he? So 
Yeah. He's making unlikely fandom. It's a it's a thirty minute college project at this point. So I asked him, Cardi, let me watch the movie. And he did. <laughs> so I watched it and there was a lot of what I saw in that movie, to me, it answered a question, why are you into Thomas? And there's no straight answer for that. You can give a multitude of reasons, but the answer is it's, it's never clear cut. But what you just saw, that's my reason. So I told them there's something to work with here. And we just went back and forth about it. I shared in my thoughts and uh, a lot of conversations later, here we are, really. And Nick, how did you first hear about this documentary? I mean, you've been friends with Brandon for years. Yeah, so I've known Brandon since 2011, so it's been some time. And uh, really, all of us as a group uh, over the last over a decade have just had regular calls on Skype and Discord. And uh, in 2019, Brandon came to me with the idea of the documentary. And uh, initially, I was just part of it as a sort of a consultant. But toward the end of 2019, we had to put together a UK unit. And that's when I became really involved. And we got the Kickstarter going. Um, we raised the money. And then the events happened in 2020, uh, right around the time that we were supposed to go to the UK. And so we just had to work on the finances of hiring a crew, how all that was going to work. And over the course of the next few years, we worked on many parts of the inner working of the documentary. So that's kind of how I became involved. And John, my friend John, what wonderful music you wrote for this thing. Like seriously, isn't that music that's yeah. yeah. well, I'd like to really quickly give a shout out to uh, our other composer, Mr. Will Wilkie, who did some of the additional music, namely in all of the trailers that you guys seem to like. So let's hear it for Will, even though he's not here. Good job, Will! So, John, what, what inspired your music in an unlikely fandom? I should have prepared for this, shouldn't I? Um, <laughs> no, well, so, it's a little bit tricky to pin down what exactly it was. I, I mean, I can tell you, oh, the fandom march was loosely inspired by the busy station theme, but I think ultimately it was, it was all kind of inspired by this desire that Cardi and I had to be as sincere as possible. Um, we didn't want to make something that sounded too epic and over the top. We didn't want the typical documentary score that's kind of plinky and plonky and like, oh, how interesting. Um, but <laughs> But um, you know, we, we wanted that real heartfelt sincerity, uh, even if it got a little cheesy, but cheesy in a very wholesome, meaningful way. So it just, I kind of tried to channel that into you know, an orchestra inside my computer, who, they, they, they work around the clock without pay, they're very nice. <laughs> and Brennan, I'm curious, why did you choose the name of Unlikely Fandom? That was just a tagline, and I never bothered to change it. And it was about a year later. I'm like, you know what? That, I think the initial, my initial title was Friends of Thomas, which is horrible. Horrible. Uh, so we just stuck with an unlikely fandom, and the whole stay unlikely motto just kind of stuck, and then Britt christened it. Very true. And I'm glad that it stuck. It's a great name. Now, I mean, we all traveled all over pretty much the U.S., filming different parts of this documentary. Ahmed was a big part of all the travel that was done. Uh, you went and did the shoots at Bachman Trains. Uh, you did the shoot with Rick Sigelko. What are some of your favorite memories from your experiences working on this? Okay, so none of those interviews would have ever happened if my mom didn't let us stay in the house. <laughs> right? she's, she's my honorary mom. Yeah. And thank you for Baba not kicking us out of the house, making your basement into a stable. So it would always be, my house would be the checkpoint, checkpoint to where we would interview all of, you know, Doug and, and Rick and even Britt. Everyone, my house is kind of like home base. And one of my favorite memories is driving the long drives with you know me and you going to Rick's house, going to Doc, going to Doug to Bachman Trains in Philadelphia, and it was a wonderful, it was a wonderful ride, honestly. 
it's it's uh it's crazy. But we got here in the end, didn't we? Yeah. Yes. And Nick, living all the way on the other coast, we went to California to do the interview with Brett. Yes. Um, how did that all come together? So uh, Cardi and Brett had been speaking for some time over email, and we bounced around the idea of. Should we ask her to be in the documentary at some point? And eventually everything just aligned. And I drove down uh, from Sacramento to Ventura. Uh, we all met up there and we met with Britt. We spoke about the television show and we interviewed her about the fandom. And it was just a great time. Uh, it was great to hear from Britt what she thought about the fandom. Um, and it was great hanging out with these guys over on my coast so I didn't have to fly across the country to see them. So that's how that came around. And I have to say that was one of the best days, probably one of the most memorable days of, our, of my life was when we met Brett Alcro, uh, really. So uh, that was a really big trip and a really great trip. Uh, John. Hi. So <laughs> when you started, just as you started writing the, the music for this film, uh, your your mother suddenly passed away. Yeah. Mm. Um, you know, she was someone who was so supportive of you. You and I worked together for many, many years, and she was always supportive of me, too. How much of the music that you wrote in this movie is inspired by or in tribute to her? Well, not to take anything away from Ahmed, but I think I kind of won the mom lottery. <laughs> uh, she, yes, was, she, she was she was awesome. My <laughs> they were friends. She was great. Um, you know, I, I don't think anything was super directly inspired, but I was thinking about this in the past week and I realized that my mom was actually a fandom person. Like way before any of us did any of this, you know, she was on in the early days on like the AOL chat rooms and stuff. And she was involved in the fandom for the uh, musician Rick Springfield. And so she knew what it was like to be in a fandom, the amazing things that it could bring the sometimes not so amazing things it could bring. So she knew that like this this isn't just this isn't just a frivolous thing. This is a real world that where you're building connections. And so I was I was tasked with having to write music to represent that world, which is, you know, a little bit of a task. Um but again, going back to what Cardi wanted with sincerity, um unfortunately my mom never heard any of the unlikely fandom music. But she did hear you know, various pieces of music of mine over the years, and uh, the ones that always struck her. She she never had a particular way of describing it, but she would say it just, it hits me in a way of like music that I used to hear. So, I don't know. I, I can't say any specific way that, that it's inspired by her, but uh, you know, she supported me to get to this point, so I guess she's in there somehow. She's in the heart of it. That's good. <laughs> And Brandon, the journey for this film sort of started on Kickstarter. Uh, you, what was the original ask, and what did you raise? Fifteen thousand dollars. Whoops. <laughs> so, did you think that would happen? No. <laughs> but it so did. <laughs> yeah. No. We we were like, well, just, you know, we just need a, some money to fly to the UK so for like accommodations, maybe pay some people to you know, drive us around. Um, but no, it, it it just grew and grew and grew and you know we would do these live streams and you know these twitter posts of promoting it and it just never stopped and that was kind of like i remember ahmed pulled me aside when we were on a discord call one night and ahmed said to me you know when it wouldn't reach the fifteen thousand dollars like this is going to change our lives forever and i think you were wrong i think no you were right <laughs> <laughs> and i want to talk about the editing process quickly because you told me earlier today that you had about 25 hours worth of interviews? We had a ton of interviews. We had 25 hours of, of people. This is not including archival, like archival Brit, archival Chris Audrey, et cetera. And it was, you know, how do you tell a story from that? How do you make it comprehensible? How do you make it under two hours? I think if this were two hours, you guys would be asleep by now. Um, no shade any two-hour documentaries. I just don't think this was gonna work that long. Um, so yeah, it was, I would go through every couple months and re-listen to like Matt Machado's interview. Because originally Matt Machado wasn't in it a whole lot. 
Now he's practically the main character of the film. <laughs> because he's one of the most charismatic guys I've ever met. But I just kept going back to his, his interview. I'm like, there's so much here. You, you, and having an editing job at the time, I got better as time went on. So ultimately, it's, it's a good thing it came out now, as opposed to way back when, because my editing skills, I feel like they have sharpened a little bit. But it, it was very hard. That's why it took four years. <laughs> now, I'd like to turn it over to you guys. Uh, so how this is going to work, uh, if you have a question, raise your hand, and I will find you in the audience, and I'll repeat it out just so that everybody can hear. Uh, just say you know, who your question's for, and then your question. Um, OK, standing up in the green and gray jacket. Hello. How many people you've been all across the town here tonight? <laughs> the question was, um, how did we get Brit Alcroft here tonight? Riz. <laughs> it, was, it was really hard to keep our secret. Yeah, uh, we, we interviewed Brit on April 1st, 2022, which is the most incredible April Fool's Day ever. That's not a lie, my lord. Um, that's, not, that's not a lie. And so from there until this very day. Oh, we have a photo. Yeah, uh, that was right after the interview wrapped. Um, incredible, incredible day. It's weird standing in the kitchen with Fred Allcroft eating cheese. I mean, it's... But she was just the most sweetest, kind woman, and I'm... This is the group, yeah, this is after we wrapped up. Oh my god, it was so fun. <laughs> okay, who else? Standing with the Thomas pillow in the back, I like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, you. Uh, yeah. So my big question is, the big shock for me was that you got Sam Barlow to do the locomotion. How did that happen? How did we get Sam Barlow to do the locomotion for context, or Sam, it, Sam blew it? Sam blew it. Uh, but the context, context for that locomotion is a song in the Thomas world that was used at the end of the Thomas and the Magic Railroad movie, and we got John to do a beautiful cover of it, and uh, we got Sam Blewett, who was one of the original singers uh, for the Thomas TV series, to do a version of it. So how did that come about? Uh, Sam and I have followed each other on Twitter for years. I don't know why. Humble brag. Um, and so I reached out to him in 2019. That, that's how far oh, long ago that was. I reached out to him in 2019. I'm like, hey, I think it'd be cool. I knew I wanted to end the film on the locomotion. It couldn't be the Atomic Kid version. It couldn't be Kylie Minogue, even though that one is a banger. Yes. Yes. There's a ja there's a version by Jackie Lee which Amanda and I love. It's yeah. incredible. But we were like, all right, what what it would be the best way to cap it off would be Sam Blewett because you know Go Go Thomas is a great song, Tell the Brave, whatever. Um, so yeah, we just talked for a few weeks and then he recorded the vocals in early 2020. John and I went back and forth on versions. There was a punk rock version, like a Blink 182 version, which was great. And then we eventually, John came up with the idea of the ska version, which I yeah. love. Because it's like, how do you get, we want like just gigantic energy, but not like super heavy guitars. How do you get energy with less distortion? Ska, easy. And uh, it was kind of interesting because uh, if you know anything about music, you know that usually the vocals are not the very first thing you record, but that's how we did it. Uh, don't recommend, but yeah, no. yeah, so there, there are two other completely different versions of it with the same vocals, um, but uh, Sam was a very, very flexible singer, so it was pretty good. That's fantastic. Okay, who else? Oh, the lady in the fur jacket? Kind of looking? Yeah. Yeah, I love your dress. You two look awesome. You're gonna make me cry. Um, <laughs> okay, so the number one inspiration, both sonically and musically, was Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Because this guy, he doesn't know what any other music from anything other than Star Wars and Thomas and the Magic Railroad is. <laughs> the reference to so, the tip track on this movie was just Rise of Skywalker, Force Awakens, and Magic Road, and everyone got sick of it real quick. No, <laughs> I, I, I got kind of numb to it at a certain point. It's like, okay, I, I, this doesn't even sound like music to me anymore. I don't know what to do here. Uh, no, but so, um, a lot of my own inspiration comes from Thomas Newman. Um, I think a lot of my string writing is kind of like Finding Nemo and Wally. -E. Those are big ones for me. Um, and the Muppet. <laughs> is there Muppet? 
There's a little bit of Wallace and Gromit in there. When I did when I did the variation of the music for the the tally thing, there's a there's a little bit of the Wallace and Gromit bounce in there. Um, uh, and then there's also Cardi pointed out there's a little bit of uh, John Powell in there, like How to Train Your Dragon, which I didn't realize I was doing at first. Oh, there's some James Newton Howard like Treasure Planet in there too. Yeah. I I wanted to do that kind of like you put in, put in little bits of like vaguely Irish sounding yeah. stuff. I don't know what it is, but it, it just makes the music real feelsy. It's great. All right, we'll take a couple more questions. Uh, waving right at me. Hello. Hello. Uh, oh, Kurt. Sleep. <laughs> so, so the question for us is, what's next? That's an excellent question. Um, I haven't slept in weeks. I'm going to go have a drink. <laughs> the next thing I'm going to make has nothing to do with Thomas the Tank Engine. Or maybe if Mark Forster calls me, that would be fun. <laughs> we could use that. Okay, let's see. Uh, Okay, uh, you came out today, I think, at Edison this weekend, asking about the Right on Track podcast. Um, well, my question is for all of you, that, um, what, what kept your love for Thomas the Tank Engine alive all these years? So the question is, what kept our love of Thomas the Tank Engine alive all these years? God, um, it's, it's the one thing that never gets old, and no matter what you go through in life, it's that dependable thing. You can always just sit down and watch it and feel at peace. And for me, it's a it's, it's a comfort thing. There's a familiarity with it. So, you know, you walk in, you just see the train just staring at you, whether it's a, a toy or a tape cover, or just even a picture of it. It's it's comforting, really. You know, you know, there's not many properties like Thomas where you just feel this thing that you grew up with your whole life. And it's it still holds like not at the base of an interest, but an emotional level too. That's, I guess, that kind of reason. And, uh, you know, both the TV show made by Britt Allcroft and the Railway Series books by the Reverend W. Audrey, everything about Thomas and the associated characters in the books, the TV show, it's the best version of it that it can be. You have other properties that kind of knock off on it, Thomas is the original, and everything about it is top tier. So there's just, it's hard to turn away to anything else when that's available to you. Uh, nothing else has the same care put into it. And it's kind of the perfect storm of things to keep you obsessed. It's basically just a glorified train set. And you know, you just, you get hooked on one thing, and then another thing, and another thing, and then it's just, it's this perfect little, you made an addiction is what you did. <laughs> I, Thomas is the reason I work in the film industry, right? I'm, I'm a continuity supervisor, and as a kid, I used to watch how many cars Thomas was pulling and make sure it matched every set. So now I'm a continuity supervisor because of Thomas. Uh, so that's kind of why for me, I love the show so much. So much care was put into it. Thank and, you, um, Brett. Thank you. Thanks, Brett. Yeah, thank you. Brett. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. Okay, we'll take one more question. Uh, right here in the fourth row with a... Uh... Josh. Oh. Oh, of course you can. Here I come. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah! I tell you, um, I am so touched and so happy. The feeling in this room is just wonderful. Um, the happy energy, and what does that say about all the possibilities in life? You know, it's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our first Q and A panel. Uh, we will be doing a second panel right away. But uh, if you have any questions for these guys, uh, there will be a reception after the second panel. You can feel free to come up to us at any point. So let's give a round of applause to John Hayes. Okay, on that note, I can't you. Thank you, guys.
Thank you. Thank you. You made that? Oh, let me ask what time we're going to No way. I just like to stop and one of his few. I just need to get it. Oh, over there. Right? Yes, sir. All right, terrific. We're just gonna sign it over here. Oh, Dale, just tell him it's for him. That's for you. Oh, it's for me. I'm sorry. Yes, that's for you. Oh, how lovely. Thank you. No, 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 no. That's terrific. I know. Just with him right here. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. Going down the line. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. Go, bro. You get a photo it's almost like you know how to organize things. Oh, no. like it's almost like you know how to organize yeah. things. Yeah. Yes. 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 Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You're quite sweet. You did a great job. I'm just going to put my first name. How about that? Yeah. All right. I bet this is pretty overwhelming, huh? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. 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 Welding. Maybe, maybe just welding. Just welding. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Are you guys bringing yeah. something to sign? Oh no, we're just doing that, bro. Here we go. Well, thank you guys for coming. Where did you come from? Chicago. Chicago. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Is it uh, colder there or is it colder here right now? Oh, uh, there. It actually snowed uh, yesterday. Okay. It snowed like a bar. So I just from California. Ah, dang. That's nice. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So it's definitely colder here. Yes. Thank you. There you go, let's get a picture of yeah. it. Oh, no. There you go, this is keep ready. A picture? Yeah, you are. hold on to it, they'll smile. One, two, three, picture time. Oh, no. That works, it looks pretty safe. Thank you guys. Thanks for coming Cheers, thank you. Yeah, here you go. That's kind of cool. Thank you. 
Alright. That was good though. Yes. Yeah.